Welcome to Waitangi. I've come out to three hours north of Auckland to the Waitangi Treaty Grounds. Located here, up on the upper grounds, is the Flagstaff. This marks the spot where the Treaty of Waitangi was first signed on the 6th of February 1840. The flags which fly are the three official flags New Zealand had. Te Kara, the flag of the United Tribes of New Zealand in 1834, the Union flag, 1840, and the New Zealand flag from 1902. Flags have been a significant talking point at Waitangi, with Tikara, New Zealand's first flag, chosen at a meeting of chiefs at this site on the 20th of March 1834. The Treaty House has been the site of some of New Zealand's most important events in history of our country. These include the choosing of the nation's first flag, Tikara, the flag of the United Tribes, and the Declaration of Independence in 1835. Of course, the Treaty of Waitangi in 1840. The building was pre-cut in Sydney and shipped to New Zealand to be erected on site in 1834. It was home to James Bushby, the first official in New Zealand from Britain and his family. Following a period of neglect after the house and surrounding land here were originally sold, it has been restored several times. The Treaty House includes two rooms dedicated to the Bushby family and contemporary displays encouraging all of us who come here to Waitangi to have a look. It's completely opposite the flag stuff.
to Waitangi and the Tifangi Runanga, a significant meeting house here on the treaty grounds. This meeting house reflects the stories and carving styles of iwi or tribes from across Aotearoa, New Zealand. and unites not only Māori and Pākehā, but all New Zealanders. Waitangi has been a place of significant gatherings for hundreds of years. This continues to the present day, as here in Te Whare Rūranga, it remains a site of very important meetings. So politics aside, this Te Whangarūranga and here on the treaty grounds continue to remain a very, very important partnership between Māori and the British Crown, as they were known, on which the nation of Aotearoa New Zealand is founded. To keep this wonderful, significant, historical place up and running, it will cost you $30 to get in if you're a New Zealand national, or 60 if you're an international visitor, and 100% of those funds go through to the upkeep of the tribal grounds and all of the buildings that were within it. Your pass will allow you a two-day visit, so if you're here in the Bay of Islands, which is three hours drive north of Auckland, please come to the Waitangi Treaty Grounds. 1840, the area in front of Busby's house looks something like it does now. On the 5th of February that year, it was the venue for the momentous gathering when Captain William Hobson, representing the British Crown, met with a large group of rangatira, tribal leaders and their people. Missionaries, mariners and settlers all came too. Hobson brought with him a proposal for the chiefs to agree to British settlement in New Zealand, and so a marquee full of colourful flags was set up, and on the 6th of February they returned to the marquee, where over 40 rangatira signed the Māori version of the document known as the Treaty of Waitangi. By September 1840, over 500 leaders from throughout New Zealand had signed this document. If you get a chance to come to Waitangi, please stop by the treaty grounds. The performance, the welcome. Wow. It's one of those places to me that we're raised from the moment we go to school to learn about the Treaty of Waitangi. And today of all days, the Parliament has given back 34 significant cultural sites as part of the treaty re-agreement. It was fitting to be here and to be welcomed into the Te Whare Ruranga. And stunning weather. Bay of Islands. More to come one day from the Bay of Islands with Walking with Steve. In the meantime, this was a very brief look at the Waitangi Treaty Grounds, a meaningful and significant place to all New Zealanders, Māori, Pākehā and anyone else that has anything to do with Aotearoa.